Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Today's topic is something very useful. So you might need it all the time, but you don't know that you need it. It's extremely useful and you should know how to do this. And it's also useful for integration, so let's go ahead and get started. What we are going to show today is that we can break down any function into the sum of an odd and even function. So what do I mean by that? So let's call an arbitrary function f of x. Okay, I hope you agree with all the steps that I take. So f of x is nothing else than f of x over 2 plus f of x over 2. Okay, that's pretty clear I guess. You add them together and you get f of x again. And I hope you agree with me that you can add a zero here and it won't change anything to the equation. So we just have to think about what a zero actually is. Maybe you can add something and then you can subtract, uh, subtract the whole thing again. So um, maybe you could add f of minus x over 2 minus f of minus x over 2. So that sounds fair I guess. It becomes a zero again and then you add those two f of x over 2's and then you're done, you get f of x again. And now we can group a little bit. So that's nothing else than f of x plus f of minus x over 2 plus f of x minus f of minus x over 2. And well, we are already done. So this is the even part of our function f of x and that's the odd part. So let's call them a bit different. Let's say this is e of x for even <laughs> and this is o of x. And all we have to do is to prove that e of x is indeed an even function and o of x is indeed an odd function. So let's go ahead and get started. So before you might get started with the proof, maybe you should think about what an even function even is. So even function doesn't mean anything else than if you plug in minus x into the equation, then it's just the equation in terms of x if you compute the output. So e of minus x equals e of x. So how can we prove this? Well, let's plug in e of minus x and yeah, then we will see. So e of minus x, what is that actually? So that's f of minus x plus f of minus minus x over 2. And now we can distribute this minus into the minus x and it becomes positive x. So that's nothing else than f of minus x plus f of x over 2. And well, uh, we can interchange those two f of minus x and f of x because we are in the field of real or complex numbers or anywhere there. So that's nothing else than f of x plus f of minus x over 2. And well, that's indeed e of x again. And that's the definition of an even function. If you plug in minus x, you get e of x. So that's pretty good, I guess. We proved this one. And now we just have to prove that o of x is indeed an odd function. So that's going to be fairly simple again. Um, you just have to think about the pure definition of an odd function. So if you plug in minus x into an odd function, it becomes minus the odd function in terms of x. So o of, o of minus x equals minus o of x. So let's plug this in again and then we are done. So what is o of minus x? Well, o of minus x is nothing else than f of minus x minus f of minus minus x over 2. And once again, we can distribute this minus into the minus x and we get a positive x. So that's f of minus x minus f of x over 2. And well, now we can factor out a minus 1 and then we are nearly done. So that's nothing else than minus f of minus x uh, minus f of minus x plus f of x over 2. And once again we are in the field of real or complex numbers so we can interchange minus f of minus x and positive f of x. So that becomes minus f of x minus f of minus x over 2. And well, that's indeed minus o of x. And then we are done. So, so it's really easy and it's extremely useful. 
And you might have used this one all the time. For example, just let's take a look at the exponential function e of x. So let's use the definition of breaking down a function into an odd and even function. So that's nothing else than e of x plus e of minus x over 2 plus e of x minus e of minus x over 2. And well, that looks familiar because that's just the hyperbolic cosine of x plus the hyperbolic sine of x. And well, we are using this a lot. And you can also look at e to the ix and this will become the cosine of x plus i sine of x. And that's also um, the way of breaking down a function. So that's quite useful and you should use it. <laughs> and I hope this helped a bit. And yeah, thank you for watching and see you in another video. I'm trying to post more English videos soon, but I'm on vacation for the next day, so this will take some time. But still, thank you for watching and have a nice day. Goodbye. Warum sind die alle so